A Louisiana pastor who has defied restrictions on holding uh, gatherings of 10 or more or religious services is now asking you to donate your stimulus check. Pastor Tony Spell was hit with a summons for violating the state's order banning gatherings. Uh, here's a clip from when the two of us spoke. Uh, this was two weeks ago, just before Palm Sunday. But Pastor, let me ask you this. If you believe the science, and mm -hmm. I, I assume you are pro-life, is that correct? I, I am pro-life. How is this a pro-life stance to put people in jeopardy of contracting a, a disease, getting a virus that has no treatment, no cure, uh, often has no symptoms, and has killed more than 8,400 people, 8,500 people this morning in our country in five weeks? Uh, my response to that is people's hope is in the house of God. If they do contract the virus, if they have fears of the virus, the church is more essential now than ever to pray with people, to let them know there is a bomb in Gilead. Back with me now, Pastor Tony Spell of Life Tabernacle Church. Uh, Pastor, uh, welcome back. Thank you, Victor, for having us on this morning. Yeah, I'm going to hold up right. on, on your challenge in a moment. But first, that was on Saturday, right before Palm Sunday. Um, yeah. And since then, your local attorney, uh, who was one of more than 1,000 who attended the Palm Sunday service, uh, he has now uh, contracted coronavirus and is in the hospital. His wife did not attend, but she is also uh, tested positive. 78-year-old Harold Aurelion, uh, he died Wednesday. The local coroner's office says he died of COVID-19. Um, and the reports are that he attended your services, too. Did he attend services? Was he a member there, Mr. Aurelion? Uh, Victor, I want to say that the rights endowed to us by our Creator are inalienable. Uh, I may be defying our governing body's orders, but we are to obey God rather than man. Yes, all of these people do attend our services. Uh, however, you have no way to prove that they contracted this virus in our services any more than the hundreds of other places that they have. That is, that is absolutely true. I think that is an important point, Pastor. My, my question, yeah. the follow-up then is, if you know that these people, and we know now that they have contracted uh, the virus, um, have you reconsidered having these services online considering that it could be spreading, if some people are asymptomatic, throughout the congregation when you put people together? We have not reconsidered, Victor. In fact, Easter Sunday, I had 16 different states represented in our Easter Sunday morning service in the congregation. Actually, people are coming out in more numbers to worship freely because uh, they're seeing that this is such a false balance in our nation. It seems to me like everything is open except for the church right now. Everything well, that, is... That's not true. Yes. Not everything is open except for the church. But I want to ask you for people who, the pastors around the country who are having these teleworship services, they mm -hmm. are able to relay the message, to relay the gospel. Why can't you? We cannot because the Word of God commands us to assemble together. And it is discrimination for me to get on this screen and try to reach the people who do not have the ability to watch me on a screen. That is, if anybody should be up in arms, it ought to be the civil rights movement who are asking me to discriminate against my poorer congregation who do not have internet. They cannot watch me on a phone. We pick them up. We're gonna run 27 buses this morning, pick them up and bring them to church feed them a meal, yeah. and then we're going to have a worship service. You know, this you, is the only way we can operate. You, you talk about your poor members, your 27 uh, buses you send uh, around. Uh, let me uh, ask you about what you're starting today. Um, a tough time mm -hmm. for so many people. 22 yes. million people nearly, uh, newly unemployed. You talk about how, mm -hmm. how needy some members of your congregation are. And this is what yes. you're launching today. Let's play a clip from your video online. Mm-hmm. Number one, April the 19th, 2020, it begins. Rule number two, donate your stimulus money. Rule number three, donate it to evangelists, North American evangelists who haven't had an offering in a month. 
missionaries who haven't had an offering in a month. If you don't have a church, give through my website. You're now asking people who you know in your congregation who don't have much, who can't even get to you without you going to pick them up, to hand right. over the $1,200 stimulus check. Why? The Pastor's Spell Stimulus Challenge is to help people who do not get stimuluses, such as evangelists and missionaries. So this morning, uh, these evangelists and foreign missionaries who have not had payroll in five weeks now will be in my service this morning where we will give them a large cash offering. You know, Victor, but Pastor, hold Jesus, on, hold on, Pastor, because yeah. nonprofits uh -huh. and, and faith-based ministries can apply for the Paycheck Protection Program. You can we get the to. economic injury, but that is your choice. If, if you no, know that your people, Victor, I just, sir, do not I just want. made sure that I, I printed out on the Small yeah, Business fine. Administration website, you have the option. They, My question is, and I'll can. let you answer, I will let you answer, yeah. but to say that people who you know don't have much, you have to go and pick them up to bring them mm -hmm. to your church, to then That's ask right. them to hand over the $1,200, the only money some people will have, and you have another right. option, why not give that money to them? And why isn't this a time for the church to give to those who do not have? <laughs> We are giving to those who do not have. Number one, I said, this is a challenge. We are challenging you, if you can, give your stimulus package to evangelists and missionaries who do not get the stimulus package. They don't file uh, taxes the way you and I do, Victor, number one. Uh, secondly, we are giving to those people who are the most needy. Okay, we are giving to them and we do not want SBA loans. We don't want the government to give us a dime. We are happy to provide for ourselves. Never will our federal or state government put one penny into our church because well, the second you, they do, they control us. You are tax exempt though, right? Control. You are tax exempt, right? We are 501c3 right? tax exempt, yes. Okay, so you'll accept that status but not apply for the loan. Uh, Pastor Tony Spell, I've got to, I've got to wrap it here. I thank you very much thank for you. coming back and making your case. God bless America.